The young and the restless, today Audra stirs the stew, Tucker gives Ashley a report, and Nate takes it easy on Victoria. Nate, who works at Newman Media, inquires of Audra about her thoughts on mashups, such as country rock. He extols the virtues of odd pairings and explains that he plans to use their combined qualities in unconventional ways. They must encourage people to be more receptive to alternative viewpoints. As Victoria shows up, Nate informs her that they are discussing tactics. When Victoria needs to sneak away for a second, Audra offers to go get a coffee on her. There's a lot to cover, so Victoria encourages her to take her time. As she leaves, Audra gives a knowing glance. Tucker and Ashley come close to locking lips at the Abbott residence, but he ultimately refrains. He feels compelled to, yet knows it would be wrong. They are not on equal ground, she has the advantage. When asked who is responsible for his debt, Ashley purrs that it is her. She challenges his claim that she scares him. He cracks a wry smile and advises against getting mixed up in anything so obviously deceitful. They all concur that he needs to give Devin his whole attention. Ashley reveals to him that Victor and Victoria accused her of buying his debt as punishment. They can't wait to get their paws on your business. She goes on to say that they are prepared to pay top dollar, significantly more than the item is actually worth. As in, what do you think? Ashley notes that this would restore his status as the dominant party. It's possible that Tucker fantasizes about traveling, rapid cars, and speedy ladies. Her progress on the exam is his main concern. He's going to go through whichever door would get him to her. Ashley claims to be foregoing a massive sum. Tucker thinks she has more value. Devin tracks down Lily in the club. In a recent phone call, Christine informed him that she had submitted her response to his case. To which Lily shrugs and replies, I guess that's what you wanted. Furious, Devin exclaims, that was filed by Amanda Sinclair. Again, Lily shrugs and says, yes, she's taking up the case. According to Devin, she recruited his ex-girlfriend, who is quite hostile to him. Lily brags about Amanda's track record of success and says she was eager to take on the challenge. Devin claims that she is using his private life against him. It's not a personal attack, Lily says. Amanda is just the most qualified candidate. When Devin sees Lily, he cries out, What the heck happened to you? If Lily's decision to hire Amanda has angered him, she apologizes. Devin retorts that she isn't sorry at all because she intended to act that way. He chastises her for involving Amanda in this when she has to be tending to her ailing mother. As a comeback, Lily points out that he was unconcerned about her sick mother while he was cheating on her. All right, so you're going to sink that low. Devin scoffs. Do you feel good about what you've accomplished so far? At one point, Lily goes on a tirade about how she just wants to protect her work with Chancellor Winters from him destroying everything. You asked for this, didn't you? That's it. Devin is confused as to why he is being singled out for poor behavior while everyone else seems to be protecting their company. Lily responds that he agreed to the merger in writing, so she's doing what needs to be done even if the two businesses will suffer financial and time losses while he is left with nothing to show for his efforts. Devin never desired conflict. He simply sought to preserve the business he and his father had established. Lily tells him to stop acting like nobody else is capable of continuing his work. Devin claims that no one else is making an effort to safeguard it. Lily assures him that rescuing Hamilton Winters won't bring their father back, or she'd be there with him. To paraphrase, you're incorrect, and if it takes a judge to make you see that, then so be it. She rages, he surpasses that. Her father was far more than a brand name and a business. It's either that or Lily suggests he retire or launch a new business. I couldn't give a crap, but you'll come to deeply regret this course of action. Seeing what she's become almost makes Devin grateful that Neil isn't around. After entering Crimson Lights, Elena is greeted by Audra. Elena wants to know how well she's adjusting to life at Newman University. How committed Nate is to his job is something that Audra has noticed. Elena agrees that he excels in every aspect of life. To put it simply, Audra loves collaborating with him. While she and Nate share a strong bond, she acknowledges that it pales in comparison to the one he shares with Victoria. Elena is well aware of the respect he has for her. Nate and Victor, according to Audra, are so in tune with each other that it's crazy. They were meant to be business partners. She feels bad that he didn't get to experience that with his family in Chancellor. 
It's obvious that Victoria has huge intentions for Nate, so she ponders that he must be the real deal for her. Victoria hangs over Nate's shoulder and flicks her hair as they go over numbers on his iPad at Newman Media. She wonders whether he's okay because he appears uneasy. Nate rejects the idea and decides it's a good opportunity to talk about their relationship. For example, Victoria may say something like, must we discuss the elephant in the room? Even though he shouldn't, Nate finds himself attracted to Victoria. To herself, she thinks, because of Elena. For the first time in a very long time, he says, things are looking up for them. Singer Victoria begins, and yet, in agreement, Nate nods. He has repeatedly gone too far. He murmurs something about confused messages, but Victoria insists the lines aren't crossed in her mind. Unlike him, she is clear on what she wants and can go after it without repercussions. She informs Nate that he has complete control over his future. Nate admits he has strong feelings, but his decision to act rashly cost him his profession as a surgeon. So, Victoria finally asks, who am I to you? Nate says Elena is irresistible and intoxicating and makes him feel powerful, but he can't harm her the way he hurt Devon. No more kissing between us, ever. Victoria acts as if she has completely forgotten that she kissed him. Have you enjoyed it? Nathan chimes in, unforgettable. She gives him her word that they won't spill the beans or steal any kisses. We'll keep our distance and not make any eye contact to ensure both of our safety. She speculates that his departure from the medical field was due to what he and Elena accomplished, but that perhaps this is where he has always belonged. Perhaps your needs are more than what she can supply. Audra informs Elena that she was recently thrown out of a meeting with Nate and Victoria so that they could go over data, and that they were at Crimson Lights. Elena wonders why Audra was left out of the conversation. Even to Audra, it seemed peculiar. The only thing she can figure is that Victoria must think highly of Nate to spend so much time with him. You have every right to be pleased with your guy. As Tucker visits the Abbott home, he tells Ashley that he wants nothing more than to start over with her and Devon and become a better guy. If Ashley and I were to turn our backs on you, what would happen? Tucker would continue to work on bettering himself. It's true that he's wealthy, yet he lacks everything that really matters. Tragic setbacks compelled him to act. Ashley isn't sure if he'd be a better man if he were fully abandoned. If Tucker fails to persuade Devon to purchase his business, Tucker asks whether she will do so. Whether or if she leaves him to pursue other options is unknown. Lily is confident that Neil is proud of her achievements at society. She's no longer in his shadow and is striking out on her own. When Devon hears this, he naturally wonders if it's meant as some sort of insult. To his dismay, Lily tells him she won't give in easily to his demands. He will eventually realize that she has prevailed. Devon sarcastically asks, by any means necessary right, while Abby stands back and watches, it continue their loud argument. With everything Neil has done for them, Devon is furious that Lily has abandoned his business. With a loud voice, Lily exclaims, this is all I have left. As she asks Devon whether he will protect her, he responds, you have me. Lily snaps, Respect the agreement you made. She assures Devon that he will never be able to replace Neil. He's willing to abandon her for the sake of business, making him a hypocrite in her eyes. Abby stews quietly in the corner. When Lily acts out like that, Devon says, no one wants to be around you, so she's all alone. Abby cuts them off. Unless they can keep the noise down, she will have to ask them to leave. After apologizing, Lily tells Devon that she and Abby are going to go get diapers. On the way out, they walk by Daniel. When he entered, he immediately noticed Lily. Tucker hears Elena tell Audra about how they've both had to adapt to Nate's new job path at society. Audra encourages Nate's optimism. One could say, he was destined to lead. Elena offers her apologies and then goes. Needless to say, Tucker has joined Audra in her endeavors, and he had this to say. You make it look so effortless. Audra claimed she was just trying to befriend nice Elena. Tucker compliments her on how wonderful she is. Audra is curious about the target market. Although Tucker acknowledges the sensitive nature of the information, he presses the woman for details regarding her familiarity with the argument between Devin and Lily. Audra has come to the conclusion that he wants to take on parental duties. Are you essentially handing over control of McCall Unlimited to Devon? 
for Tucker's inquiry to be answered, she must first respond to him. Audra has heard that their romance may not be able to make it through the conflict. Devon is asked once more if she will be joining his company. I already have, Tucker says in response. Victoria at Newman Media is known for speaking her mind. It's quite invigorating to Nate. He probes for insight into her future anticipations by inquiring about her hopes and fears. It is her sincere wish that they have a long and happy life together, where they are always able to be completely candid with one another. Nate is in agreement. He prevents her from leaving and gushes over her beauty and inspiration. But he can't help but admit that his heart belongs to Elena. To Victoria's credit, she understands and appreciates that. There's been an update on McCall, says Audra, who just walked in. He has decided to transfer ownership of the business to his son. Victoria assumes that Ashley purchased the debt in an effort to coerce Tucker into making amends with Devon. That makes things more challenging, she says, but not impossible. They'd have to persuade Devon that purchasing McCall will be a financial disaster from which he won't be able to recover. And Nate, his cousin, was the perfect person to relay the news. Clearly, Nate is taken aback by this. Lily will do anything to win, Devon says Abby in the penthouse. He is curious as to what she and Amanda have planned for the upcoming court case. I really, really don't want to do this. Abby inquires as to whether or not he is anxious about losing the lawsuit or about having to confront Amanda once again. Lily tells Daniel at Society that she's embarrassed they fought in front of everyone. To what extent she can endure this is unknown. To push buttons like no one else family, Daniel muses. Lily must give up hope that she can turn things around. Chancellor Winters is her last remaining weapon, therefore she must use it wisely. Daniel tells her she means more to him than just the business. There are many people who care about you. When asked if she is serious, Lily replies, not really. She has no one left to care for her now that her parents are dead, Billy is no longer in her life, and her kids have moved out. When asked, what about me? Daniel naturally responds with a question. Lily informs him that he has been absent for some months. The litigation, she predicts, will quickly turn nasty. Daniel probes further, wondering whether she really believes the pain will be worthwhile. So, at Devon's, he thinks he must confront Amanda once more. Abby finds herself thinking she's the fortunate one. Because of Dom, she is now forced to see chance, and the resulting awkwardness has vanished. The next time Devon sees Amanda will be in court, and he can't believe it. The pain is inevitable. He is aware that this is what Lily wants. She would rather that the process be difficult. Abby questions whether or not the potential damage is worth pursuing legal action, and she begs him to think again about Tucker's proposal. Tucker, calling from Crimson Lights, tells Ashley that he hasn't been able to get Devon to sign the dotted line yet, but that he is gathering information on someone with whom he may strike a deal. If Devon is thinking about purchasing McCall, it's because he hopes it will solve all of his issues. Nate refuses Victoria's request at Newman Media to interfere with Divin's purchase of McCall Unlimited. That's not how it ought to feel. He explains that he believes Tucker's offer could put a stop to the dispute between Lily and Devon over the IPO, for which he bears some responsibility. Victoria knows he means well when he says he wants to make peace between the Winters families, and she knows that he can only do that if Devon abandons his claim to Hamilton Winters and takes on McCall. Nate hopes it comes to pass. After saying that it's not in their best professional interests, Victoria leaves. It seems you don't have much of a choice, Audra says to Nate.